Maybe there's some otters. I have a lot of spots picked out. Try to avoid flooding my boots. It's right there. Oh, I mean, that's heavy. Oh, feel that? Oh, there, there, there. See him? Tons of this stuff. Look at this. Whoa. I think we solved our first mystery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, guys. Look at what we got. We got a snake. This thing is still pretty rock solid. Junie at a river. Mm, it's treating me right. All right, so I clambered down here from the top. So now I'm right at the river level. We got some ducks. Or sorry, geese making some making some vocalizations, perhaps signaling to the rest of the crew that it's time to drift down river because there's some type of unknown animal bumbling around in the brush. That would be me. And there's nice properties over there along the along the slow moving river. There is a current though, you can see it. I'm tempted just to try to cross here because it gets real shallow where they are there. But I think this is too deep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna head around here and there should be some type of outcrop starting right about there where I should be able to follow that down and then hit that first pier, which is right there. You can see it in Google Earth. And then there's one, two, three, three or four more, and maybe some other, I'm hoping some other canal infrastructure maybe right there. So we're bushwhacking through these flower undergrowth here. We're heading down this direction. Hopefully there's an outcrop down here. Or maybe there's the water just gets shallow enough that we can just walk on down there. That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping. And as you can see, we have silt, river silt deposited on all the foliage here up to about this level. So this river here can flood to this level. All right, we're back down at the water. All kinds of tracks. Maybe like raccoon tracks or otter tracks. Maybe there's some otters. That's where I parked up there. There's a public po boat put in. Uh, it's still too swampy and muddy. Let's get back up here, continue our bushwhack along the banks of the mighty Juniata. I haven't done that many, if any, uh, videos on the Juniata. At least I don't think I have. I have a lot of spots picked out. I got a lot of pins on my map, places to go. I just haven't gotten there yet. See, now there it looks like it's 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 shallow enough. People in some kind of paddle boat. A lot of, I think it's mostly fishing down here. I doubt this. This is much more than 10 feet deep here at the deepest out there. Don't quote me on that. This is where I want to go, right here. We have solid ground here on the stony bottom. Oh, 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 oh. I was getting too deep. I try to avoid flooding my boots. It's right there. Actually, let's just crawl back here. Get, oh, jeez. Back on the muddy slopes here. I'm trying to avoid two things. Flooding my boots. I also don't want to get stuck in this. Some of this sediment gets uh, pretty sticky, if you know what I mean. So here's some shallows. Plenty of eelgrass. Yeah, we're on the outcrop now. That's where we just were. We came in from over there. But uh, yeah, I'm seeing plenty, I'm seeing fish, a lot of seal grass. Look at the way it, it kind of collects here. Isn't that weird? Oh, I mean, that's heavy. Oh, feel that? That is, I'm just picking up this really heavy. You can see how this would just sit there, and build up into this kind of, it's kind of a cool shape, right? Kind of shows you the flow of the river. Hey, look at this. Oh yeah, look at those fish. Hold on, look at that. They're all, this looks like a bedding plane here with another one of those big uh, eelgrass things. But this one had a lot of fish, they all ran away. We're not that far. Oh, there, 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 see them? Little creek chub or whatever, they're everywhere. Look at this right here now, it's in the shade. Let me get out of the shade. Yeah, you should be able to see it. It's a nice pocket. You got the grass, the dark, flat rocks. It almost looks like shale, maybe. And then in the middle, you got all these freshwater shells, bivalves. All right, and he's like, but these accumulate in you know in little little pockets. And look at all those different 
definitely there's spiral ones. There's like the clam looking ones, the bivalves, and they're just, they're, I mean, there's tons of this stuff. Look at this. I mean, if you added up all the all the um, the weight of all the shells in the entire river, the Judiata River, I mean, what would that be, right? And if you got enough of these shells being deposited somewhere like downriver in a lagoon or something, the weight of the shells and the silt mixed in there over time, if the conditions are right, you could wind up with freshwater limestone, which has a name, a technical name, which I can't remember right now. Most limestone is formed. I'm pretty sure in the in, in the oceans, shallow oceans, but there can be freshwater limestone. The water looks uh, nice here. It's not murky like the the other parts of the, like the Susquehanna. All right, my feet are wet. And here we got some reddish stuff. You see that that red stuff? That might be sandstone, like maybe Triassic age sandstone. My boots are filled now, so let's not let that hold us back anymore. The water feels pretty good. We're getting a good shot of the uh, of the rock. I don't know if it's vertically straight up and down bedded, but it's kind of going in this direction. So I want to say it's sandstone, but I don't know. You see how it gets dark there? It's light and then dark. The question is, is it seagrass the whole way over or does it just get deeper? Let's head down to the to the aqueduct piers. Check out these outcrops. Look at that. Now, I don't think this is some kind of like columnar jointing. You know, columnar jointing is when the volcanic rock comes up and it cools and it crystallizes into these, I think, octagonal or they have sides. It looks like an artificially created thing. I don't think this is basalt, but it is, it's coming apart in a very almost cubic way. Edges, the right corners, it looks just looks like almost like a, a block, a block that was made by by human hands here look at this over here you see that that's not quite as man-made looking so here's the, the bedrock that that stuff comes out of there's a piece right here. here oh look at that this is still i think that's still part of the that's still part of but i don't think it's moving but you can see how it cracks here's a piece here That's heavy. That's not nearly as square as the other piece. Whoa. And it's definitely got some kind of iron in it or something because it's got that rusty color. All right, enough dilly-dallying. Let's get down to what we're doing before something goes wrong. I've made it down to the old viaduct piers. There's one right here. That's the Dolphin, I guess the Dolphin, maybe the Dolphin County side. I think this is Juniata County right here. The highways are all over there. Over here, it's just rural and there is a train tracks over there. As far as I can see, we have one, two, three, four, four piers visible right here. I'm assuming they all used to be that height, which means these middle two, or middle three have been quite, taken down by the years of weathering. Look at that one. So it was pretty, it was pretty high. The mainline canal came up lower Susquehanna there and then it cut off to the Union Canal somewhere I think down around Harrisburg. But then there was another part of the canal came up here, crossed right here at this once busy viaduct, canal boats going overhead, probably about close to 30 feet over our, over our heads. And the canal followed that side of the Juniata River up that way. And if you look at the uh, satellite photography, you'll, you, it's very easy to see. And look at the LIDAR too. It really pops out in the LIDAR. Whoa. Here's an old, an old piece of, looks like iron. Oh wow, look at that. There. See that? That might have been part of the original construction. If I knew more about iron working, you know, you could tell. Anybody out there who is really familiar with this stuff? 
based upon the style and the corrosion. So I'm standing on one of the middle two piers. Big pier, one, two, three, big pier. Here you can really see the front of it. Oh, 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 I think we solved our first mystery. Let's check out the construction here. See this? That's what that was. So we answered our question pretty quickly with that. This piece used to go just like that. This is probably not the exact piece, but see how those, those would have fit in there. It's probably just to try to keep these blocks together, a way to bind everything together. Here you can see the finished product before, the way it looked before it was ripped apart by the river. Yeah, and there you can really see how they reinforced this nicely formed round, you know, I don't know what you would call the front of a pier that has that shape to, to split the water and the ice. Maybe there were some ice breaking things here, but then the inside was just filled with big blocks. This block is gone. We noticed the missing block there. It's like Tetris, right? Missing block, that block, that could be that block right there. There's another one there. I'd say probably half the flow of the river is probably coming through this and that. So that's too deep and the current's probably too strong. I just came here scouting today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, guys, look at what we got. Look at what we got. We got a snake. You know, they, their camouflage is so good. But I was standing here talking for a couple minutes and I didn't even notice it, but it looks like one of those northern mill snakes i'm going to extend and then i'm just going to sink this thing very quietly into the water and see if we can get close to this thing what is it doing down there this thing needs to come up and breathe sometimes either that or it's dead all right let's do this shot Before I started filming the snake on the bottom of the river, I was gonna say, this here looks pretty deep. This current is pretty strong here. There's a lot of water moving through here, even though the river's low. You can see it coming around the sides. So I'm just not, I'm not equipped to go out there, but there's a bunch of blocks down in there. Uh, I don't even know what's over there. So what we're gonna do for the rest of today is we're just gonna go this way and explore and see what's behind there. Cause the actual, the, the canal is back there too. The old prism is back there too. But we should definitely come back here the mask and fins and see if we can't find any cool underwater uh, ruins over there because this water is still this water is still nice swimmable I mean you can swim in this with just a with just some bathing with a bathing suit For right now let's go check out this pier right here just came from there now we're at one of the base of one of the big piers this one and the one the whole way across the river seem to be the only ones that have survived in any meaningful way This thing is still pretty rock solid. Let's go peek over here. Oh, shit. Oh. God. This outcrop is not conducive to standing. So here's the front of one that is mostly intact. I don't know about the other side. A chunk of the top is missing here. Not sure why, but you can see the way these curves, blocks are curved and the metal reinforcements. And you got this big pile of debris. And remember on top of that was a bridge that was filled with water. So imagine how much that thing must have weighed because you had to go the whole way across. So here's one big one and look how far, just from here over to there where there's another one in the forest it looks like, just that stretch alone. I mean, with the water and then when the arcs went over, this thing had to be built to be able to carry a, a really heavy load. All right, so that's the big pier on the other side that looks like it's largely intact. Then there's one, two, three, pretty much destroyed ones. And then right there's the one we were just at. 
I came out here today to just scout. I didn't, I really wasn't prepared to do a full episode, but I decided to go ahead and shoot one anyway because the stuff is just right here. It was easy to find. It's a beautiful day and the Juniata River, hmm, it's treating me right. But there's enough to bring us back here. And there was the train. I think that's the third train we've seen since we've been here. This is a busy kind of nexus up here. Susquehanna comes off this way. I'd like to go check out the confluence right where the two waters mix and see if anything cool happens. But other than that, we're gonna have to come back to this spot. Maybe if we get here before the end of the warm weather, we can jump in the water. Hopefully there's no, we don't see any more snakes. Maybe check out some of those blocks and um, swim or walk or wade our way over. Or maybe just bring the kayak up to the uh, up to the boat launch there. It's just right up the river, all right? If you had a good time, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, follow me on all the platforms, all right? This is Brett for Topo Ranger. Hope you had a good time, because I know I did. And I'll see you in the next episode.